Three fair coins are tossed. Find the probability of all heads, find the probability of two heads, and find the probability of at least one tail. Now, what we're going to do here is for this first part, we're just going to note what is the probability of flipping a heads in a fair coin. Now, this probability equals one half, right? You've got a half chance to, to flip a heads, you've got a half chance to flip a tail. Now, I'm just going to write this out here by three lines, one for each coin flip. So what's the probability of getting heads on the first coin flip? We'll label this first, second, and third, right? For all three, all three fair coins. Now the probability to get a heads on the first is one half, and on the second is one half, and on the third is one half. So if we multiply these together, what we end up getting is one eighth which is the probability we want, and that's the probability to get all heads. Now this makes intuitive sense, right? You have three coins, each, each coin to get a heads is one half, so one half to the third is gonna be one eighth, or one half times one half times one half. Now, for the second portion, we're gonna use our binomial theorem here to the right, and I've just, I just wrote out, here's our binomial theorem, and then I just wrote out what this n choose k is. Sometimes it's written like this, um, and for this portion here. Uh, so essentially I just, if for those of you unfamiliar with, with n choose k or with the, with the binomial theorem, I just wanted to write out these uh, formulas so you guys have them. Um, I'm not going to do this out explicitly, although it is a pretty quick calculation, right? Or you can plug it into your calculator. A lot of calculators have, uh, you know, the TI series definitely have the, the choose and the permutation and the factorials. A lot of uh, less less sophisticated calculators also have this, but anyway, we'll move on here. So let let's label the event x to be a head to to flip a heads right. So essentially, what this is is we want p of x equals two, and you might see this notation in your book. And I find this notation a little bit easier to plug straight in um, to our formula here. So we know that our n equals 3, right, because we have three fair coins. Now, what this 2 is going to be, right, for the two heads, is going to be our k. So this makes it really easy to plug into our formula. So plugging into our binomial theorem above, we're just going to have 3 choose 2. Now, our p, right, is 1 half, we've said. So 1 half squared, 1 minus 1 half to the 3 minus 2, right? So this just equals... 3 choose, whoops, that's not divided, that's just a choose. 3 choose 2 um, times 1 half to the third. You guys can check my algebra there. And now note that 3 choose 2 just equals 3, right? So this is 3 factorial over 2 factorial, 3 minus 2 factorial, which equals 3 times 2 times 1. Um, over 2 times 1 times 1 factorial is just times 1, right? So you'll see that all of this cancels and we're just left with 3 here. Um, so moving on, this is just going to be 3 times 1 8 which equals 3 over 8, which is our answer. So all we've done here is simply labeled what our event is, right? So our event here, we want two heads. It's what the problem asks for. So we've, for our, so our first step here is just label that as x. And now note that how many x, how many of those events do we want? Well, we want two. How many of those, how, what are the total, the, the total number of events we're going to do? We're going to toss three coins. So we've got our n equals three, our k equals two, and we've literally just plugged into our formula and gotten an answer. Now, the last one's going to be a little bit similar. Um, for the probability of at least one tail. Now, the probability of at least one tail, we're going to do the same thing. Let y be our event that's a tail, right? So we can rewrite this and say p of y is at least one, right? Which is greater than or equal to one. Now note that we're still only going to three. So we can write this in two different ways. We can either write it as x equals 1, right? Since we only have 3, we want the probability that it, get, 
it, it can equal one, it can equal two, or it can equal three, right? That's at least one tail. We could, we could get one tail out of three, two tails out of three, or all three out of three. And all we do is just write this in our notation that I explained above, right? Now we could also note that, oh, you know, I just realized I messed this up, but these are all supposed to be Y's. Not a big, uh, not a big change here. I just messed that up. So this is all supposed to be Y, Y, and Y. So we could also write this as one minus, right, the probability that X equals zero. Because if you think about it, if we want the probability that it's at least one, we're adding these probabilities, right? But if we take all of the possibilities, which is our y equals zero, our y equals one, our y equals two, or our y equals three, that should equal one, right? Because the probabilities of all number of events need to equal one. So if we just take one minus the portion of that that we don't want, which is x equals zero, right? Because that isn't greater than or equal to one, we were gonna get the same answer. And I'll write both of these out so you guys can see. So I will start with P of Y equals one, and this is just gonna be three choose one, right? One half to the one times one minus one half to the three minus one plus three choose two. And all I'm doing here, right, is just, I'll write it in red here so you guys can see. This is our K, this is our K, this is our K here. This is our K here. Just so you guys can see that where I'm getting these, these, these numbers from. But essentially I'm just plugging into our formula that we used, that we've been using our binomial theorem. So then we've got one half squared times one minus one half to the three minus two plus P of Y equals three, which is three choose three one half squared, excuse me, this is one half to the third, and then this is one minus one half to the three minus three, right? So if we continue this, this is gonna be three factorial over one factorial over three minus one factorial times, and now what this is is one half to the third, you guys can check my math on that, but it is, and now for this, you're gonna have three factorial over two factorial over three minus two factorial times one half to the third. And now, how many different ways can you choose three items out of three items? It's just gonna be one, right? But we can write this down anyway. It's three factorial over three minus three factorial times one half to the third. And what this equals, is gonna be three eighths plus three eighths plus one eighth, which equals seven eighths, which is the correct answer. But I just wanna show you guys that we can also write this as one, remember me saying one minus P of X equals zero. So this is one minus three choose zero, one half to the zero, one minus one half to the three minus zero, which equals one minus one eighth, which equals seven eighths. So we do get the same answer there and it's a lot quicker using using the second method, right? Because all we've, we've, we've just cut down on the amount of calculation that we need to do, which will also cut down on the amount of maybe algebraic error you might, you might um, come across while doing a problem like this. So it can be done either way. Just try and think about the problem is that if all of the sets of possibilities, right, the probability of zero plus the probability of one, two, three, uh, have to equal one, what we wanna do is just take out the portion that we don't want. So in our case, they ask for tails um, that's at least at least one tail. So what we don't want is zero tails, right? So if we do one minus the probability of zero tails, we're also gonna get the same answer.
So I just wanted to explain that a little bit and that's how that works.